name is Steve Maruzzi. I'm here to talk about the NeoTherm user interface and how to navigate through the control. When you first power up the boiler, it will go through a synchronization process, so it's gathering information from the Honeywell control. While we're waiting for that to synchronize, I'm going to talk about a few buttons on the main screen, on the main display. We have up and down arrows, left and right arrows, an OK button. On the right-hand side, we have a back button, so if we're on a, on a screen and we want to revert back to the previous screen, just simply hit the back button. We have an I button or I icon that's known as the information button. We would press the information button to get to our submenus and make changes. And lastly, we have the home button. So anytime we're in a screen and we just want to go right back to the home screen, we just press the home button. Right now we're in the home screen, and this gives us our basic information of the boiler, such as inlet temperatures, outlet temperatures, uh, delta Ts, things to that nature, that can be customized. So if you want to show flame signal on a certain uh, on a certain level, uh, you can. We can get in and talk about changing that. Also, in the center information, it gives you more information. It gives you the state of the boiler, what it's doing. It's running in pre-purge, or it's running, or it may be in standby because we don't have a call for heat or hot water. Also, down in the lower portion, it'll tell us if we have any hold, alert codes, or lockout codes. So if we had an ignition failure due to a gas interruption or uh, for some reason the boiler went off on high limit, it would show up down here in the lower portion of the screen. It'll also allow you to reset it right here from utilizing the large OK button. You just press the OK button. So what we're going to talk about is um, going into the pressing the information button, which brings us to a sub uh, screen or a sub menu screen. There are six items on this screen. We have quick start, so when you have a single boiler application, you simply press quick start and highlight, for instance, your central heat set point or your domestic set point, things of that nature, and make adjustments. We also, utilizing using the down arrow, we have a test button. So you can highlight test, press OK, and it'll bring us to a test screen that we can actually set up the boiler for combustion. Using, using the down arrow again, I'm going to highlight diagnostics. So I can highlight diagnostics, press OK, and now get in and look at my alert codes or lockout codes or something of that nature. Using the up arrow, I will come up and then go over to the login screen. Some of our screens will prompt you to log in, so you'll need a login password uh, to log in to make some changes on these screens. That is all in our manuals, and we'll discuss that today. Using the down arrow again, we get into advanced settings. So if we're doing what's called cascading, uh, taking multiple boilers and daisy chaining them together, we want to get into the uh, advanced settings screens. And lastly is the display screen. Uh, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to press the OK button. So now we're into the display screen. And what you'll see, it's already highlighted for LCD contrast. Now what that is, that's the lighting, the backlight of the main screen. Press OK. And it now will allow me to lighten or darken the screen just by simply, simply using the left or right arrows. Okay? And once we find a level that you like for that mechanical room, just simply press OK. And now it is, uh, goes back to the previous screen. We are going to go back here. And I'm going to start at the home screen. So let's uh, talk about setting up a boiler, any single boiler application, and we want to get into setting up central heat set point, uh, domestic hot water for an indirect tank, things to that nature. So starting at the home screen, we press the eye icon again, and it brings us to that sub-menu. It's highlighted for quick start. We press OK, and you'll see central heat set point highlighted. Okay? Press OK again and it brings us to a level to adjust that central heat set point. Now, central heat set point is the highest temperature we want to achieve. So we'll call that, for example, 180 for a baseboard heating application. It may be 120 for an um, in-floor radiant, something to that nature. Uh, it's all defaulted for 120 degrees. So if you first power up your boiler and you have a thermostat calling, the boiler will only come up and modulate and maintain 120 degrees. So what you need to do is set that set point uh, for, your, for your system or depending on the application you have. Very simple, use the up arrow. Uh, bring it up to your set point setting. So if you had a 
hydronic uh, system, you wanted to maintain 180. Just use your up arrow to bring it up to 180. Okay, and then you could press OK. To the right-hand side, you'll see two numbers, 55 to 190. That is the range that we're in. So we can adjust this anywhere in that range from 55 degrees to 190 degrees. I'm going to use 180 for the example here. So once we get 180 in the screen, just simply press OK. All right, and that brings us back to the quick start screen. Now, if we have an indirect tank and we want to now set our temperature for the indirect tank, and what I'm referring to is only the boiler temperature there, um, you would come down and highlight DHW set point. You could press OK. That's defaulted for 120. So using the sensor in the indirect tank, this is where we would go up and increase our temperature to 125, 130, uh, 140, depending on the application. Keep in mind you'd want to have a mixing valve uh, on your indirect, uh, for, so for any scald reasons or scald reasons. So highlighting 120, for example, here, I'm going to press OK. The other options now we have are out to a reset. Um, utilizing a high efficiency product, you want to use outdoor reset. So we would choose highlight outdoor reset. As you can see, it's already enabled for you. It, become, it, it comes defaulted from the factory, enabled for outdoor reset. You use your outdoor sensor to tie it into the boiler, and then you would set your temperatures. So for example, your low water temperature and the low boiler temperature. Um, in a baseboard heating application, let's say you may only want 130 degrees as the lowest temperature uh, on a very warm day. So an example of this is at a 55 degree day, uh, what, what temperature do we want in that boiler? Do we need 180? No, we might only need 130, 135. So with it highlighted, we press OK, and now we can use our up button, up or down arrow, find our set point. I'm going to bring this up to 130. Once it's at 130, I press OK, and it brings me right back to that quick start menu. The next thing we will set is the max outdoor temperature. So your max outdoor temperature is at what temperature do you want us now to only run at 130? So we'll call that hypothetically 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, can we get by with 130 degree water temperature feeding the system? And we should be able to. So we're going to use the down arrow here and bring that down to 60 degrees or 55 degrees. And we'll press OK. We are now back to the quick start menu again. Next, we're going to highlight the minimum outdoor temperature. Now, the minimum outdoor temperature is the temperature of the coldest day of the year for your region. So in some regions, we'll call that zero degrees. So now at zero degrees of outdoor air temperature, you will now achieve 180 degree boiler temperature feeding your system. All right. For the example, I'm going to bring that down to 10 degrees of outdoor air temperature just by using the down arrow. Once 10 degrees appears on the screen, I simply press OK. The adjustable high limit and adjustable stack limit are more for testing purposes, um, so we're not going to get into talking about that here today. Okay. And going back to the eye icon uh, brings us back to the submenu. And next, what we can do is go in and test the boiler. So if we're actually firing this boiler, you want to do a combustion test and set your combustion uh, doing an analysis uh, on your combustion. So very simply, with the boiler now running, it's not at this point. But uh, I'm going to highlight test, press OK, and forced rate is highlighted for me. I press OK again. And it will allow me to go in and lock this boiler into high fire. So with it locked into high fire, we can now adjust our CO2 on high fire. When we're done with that, we would, well, for example, we're going to start with high fire. The boiler must be running uh, for this to work, okay? Right now, I do not have the boiler running. But we would press OK, okay? It's going to ask you the password. So what you now have to do is get in and log in for the password. So I'm going to press OK again. Here's the, here's the screen prompting us to log in. I press OK again, and our password is LNT. So you're going to use your up and down arrows to highlight LNT. So using my up arrow, I highlight L. I press OK. I'm now going to go down and go over to N for N. 
And now I'm going to scroll up to T and press OK. I have to remember to scroll back down to OK. So you're going to scroll back down to highlight OK on the screen, and now I press the OK button. I'm now logged in. LNT stands for Lars Neotherm. Very simple. It is in all of the INO manuals. At this point, again, I'm going to hit OK, and what I would do to lock it into high fire, I'd come down to highlight start test, press OK again, and now the boiler will modulate and ramp up to 100% of fire. Once we're dialed in on CO2 with a combustion analyzer, we want to test low fire. <clears throat> so we go up, highlight low fire test or low fire, and uh, press OK, and then the boiler now will modulate down to 10% to give us low fire adjustments. All right. We also have a timer here, and you can see on the screen, or you should be able to see on the screen, the test timer is counting down. So it's we have four minutes and 24 seconds left. What that is, that gives us starting, the start point is five minutes. It gives us five minutes to dial in CO2. If you're timed out, very simply go back in, click start test, and it'll time it'll start the timeout again from five minutes counting down backwards. So that's a very nice user-friendly screen. We'll go back to the eye icon and diagnostics. So if someone has a boiler and they're concerned with diagnostics uh, or if they've had a lockout and want to see that lockout history or someone's trying to troubleshoot, use your down arrow, highlight diagnostics, press OK. It'll give you some options here. What you want to do is highlight history. Press OK again. And now I'm going to highlight or hi lockout history is highlighted. I'll press OK one more time and it'll give me the last 15 faults. Okay. So if we have a lockout that occurred, that information is there. There will be none from the factory. So all coming initially from the factory, these will all, it'll all say none, okay? Uh, if you then had experienced a 109 lockout because you didn't have the gas on or you were doing testing, things of that nature, they will start appearing on the top part of the screen. This stores the last 15 lockouts. So if we now have a 16th lockout, let's call that a, 79 high limit or something, uh, it'll drop the last lockout. Okay, So it always stores the most recent lockouts. Going back to the eye icon, you also have the login screen that if you know you're going to be getting into testing and things of that nature, you can immediately log in. Uh, that way you're not prompted as we saw earlier when we get into the test to, uh, to lock into high fire. Okay? And the advanced the advanced settings gives us a few other options, but this is when we're using lead lag. Uh, lead lag is for cascading, which we'll talk about in another video, uh, and we can cascade up to eight boilers. So from here, I'm just going to go back to the home screen, <clears throat> and we are now back to the home screen. And uh, that's it as far as setup on a single boiler application. For anybody interested in uh, training classes on the Neotherm, which we get into, we do have a live-fired station here at the facility. We can hold up to 70 people in our training room. Uh, please go to Lars.com and look at our online sign-up sheets for our training classes. Thank you very much. <laughs>